بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our community. And after Ramadan, we're back with you guys. And um, especially um, tonight, we have a special guest for you. And the topic is quite simple. We've done it before as well. Um, very interesting. My journey to Islam. So we have a guest, um, a sister, mashallah, revered sister. And we will hear her journey to Islam, inshallah. Hopefully, it will benefit me and everybody else and as Muslims it's always an honor to welcome uh, people from other faith to Islam it's an honor for me um, without any delay let me introduce our guest tonight uh, assalamu alaikum sister how are you alaikum salam alhamdulillah I'm good I am so honored and really um, thankful to God and you as well that you accepted our invitation to talk about your journey to Islam thank you for inviting me and we want you to introduce yourself to our viewers from yourself. So um, please tell our viewers who you are and what you do. So, Assalamu alaikum. Um, my name is Gosha. Um, I'm originally from Poland. Um, I'm 26 years old. Um, I came to London five years ago. Um, what else? I'm working. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Mashallah. So, you know, um, today is, I, I'm nothing to be honest. You're the main person. <laughs> you know, you're going to introduce and you're going to talk to our viewers tonight. You know, it's, it's amazing to hear when someone actually chooses Islam from different faith or different background because they chose voluntarily and they found something special. That's why they changed their religion. And the sacrifices they have to make in that journey, it's always something special. I was born as a Muslim, so I didn't give no sacrifice. So some, maybe this is the, one of the reasons maybe we are lazy Muslims. You know, we don't care to learn. You know, we found it in a plate. So if I could ask you the first questions, um, how did you hear about Islam? So during the COVID, I started working with a Muslim people. And that's how it started, actually. Like, I started questioning because before I didn't really have any chance to, to hear about it. Okay, I heard about it, but there was always the bad stories. And um, so, yeah, when I started working with a Muslim people and I became a friend with a, a Turkish girl, and then I met her mom, and then the mom was tell her mom was telling me more about Islam. And then the first question she said to me, you know, when you... Christian and you go to the church and you have to tell your sins to the priest and then he's the one who is telling you what to do to get forgiveness. He said, we don't believe in that. Like, it's only you and a God. And the God is the only one who can forgive you. Who, and, and that's how it started. And then I spent a lot of time with my friend and I saw how close they are to their like, religion, their beliefs. And then how like respectful they are, even that I wasn't Muslim, they always treat me like their own fa family. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how it started. Were you not scared? Because you just said um, <laughs> um, what you hear from media and, and people, that Muslims are scary, they're extremists, they this, they do that. Were uh, you scared to go to the Muslim house in the beginning? Um, I think not really. I mean, maybe a little bit because I didn't know what to expect. but. In the same time, like we are all human beings there, and then because they showed me the kindness, and I think there was nothing to be scared of. And then my friend at work, when I asked her questions, she was giving me the answers, and I was like, you know, actually that makes sense, and and there's nothing wrong about it because what what I had been like in Poland and where they don't really talk about Islam, and we see the books when they're writing or how. But as a life, as a wife, being a, having a, a Muslim a husband, or being in the like, you are like so oppressed, and you can't do this, you can't do that. When the truth is, like, we are so free, we have so many rights, and and that's that's not true. So my friend was talking to me about it, and I'm, and I was like, you know what? It's not as the people are showing. I, I think the thing is, 
if we we don't know we are just scared and this is just the lack of knowledge um, but yeah now I alhamdulillah like I have a good experience in the beginning of my journey definitely I would love to know what's your uh, before you knowing your friend what was your view about Islam what was going through your head what did you knew about Islam just to understand before um, I didn't know a lot I know their covering so when you hear Islam what is it what comes to your mind then Oh. Before, before knowing Muslims. Oh, it was, I think it was, as, as a lot of people say, like, oh, they are terrorists, they're killing for their, their God, and because God is telling them to do, which is it, it's so sad because it's not true. And, and I think people should, before judging, they should, they should get that knowledge first and learn actually what Islam is, because it's a beautiful religion and, and definitely is nothing but. Um, but that was the view. And then... If somebody will ask me three years ago, I will start laughing. If somebody will say, oh, are you going to be a Muslim or are you going to cover or this, I will start laughing. So you people crazy, like, <laughs> that, that's not happening. Um, but maybe because I wasn't used to as well. And before when I, when I, I, mean, when I came to London, um, I wasn't really around Muslim people. And then the area where I was living, there was a lot of Polish people. Um, so I didn't really face Muslim people. And then when I moved to East London, it was more like, I don't know, I was around them. So I think we're getting more comfortable because we see these people are really good people. They, they're not there to harm us or something. So, yeah. Alhamdulillah, that's great. Um, do you have, uh, bef uh, in, in your journey, when you, so um, what was the thoughts going to your mind before you become, before your Shahada? Is there any incident happened that you can't forget before the Shahada? Anything? comes to your mind that that happened that that like kind of uh, led me to really to the to islam um i think what i think it was a ramadan time as well and it was a before taking shahada and then how i saw my friends like fasting and then being together supporting each other um that was a one of the things and but as I think when I when I went to to speak with the brothers who are giving a dawah, and then I asked them the questions and they they answered me, and then I was like, okay, you know, there is nothing scared about the Islam. Why, if if I believe that's true, why shouldn't I go for it? Okay. Was it difficult to uh, make a choice to do shahada? Was it difficult because oh, it was. you know that you could be losing your parents, you could be losing your friends, you could be losing your society, you could be losing a lot of things. I mean, it's like upside down, isn't it? Your lifestyle yeah, is this. Yeah, definitely, yeah. How is your lifestyle before Islam? So, the, the thing is, I was scared, or I think the most scary thing was about my family and what's going to happen and if they're going to accept it because, because they have no knowledge about Islam and I was scared how they will react and the other thing is because before Islam I was like party girl like I was going out with my friends and I kind of enjoyed it and I was like oh so now I need to give up everything like I need to make those changes and I didn't know the reason behind it why I shouldn't do it and it was scary and then the other thing was about the food like eating halal but uh, Alhamdulillah, that wasn't that hard in the end because I started eating halal before taking shahada. And I think it's because I was around Muslim people, so whenever we were going out, there was halal food. And, and then I was trying my best because uh, I didn't just want to eat like something in front of them that they, they are not eating. So just out of respect. Um, but yeah, it was hard as well because before taking shahada, I was kind of like delaying. Because I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Poland, I'm going to go and see my family. Um, and it was just before Christmas time. And I was like, I didn't see my family for so long. Um, so how I'm going to celebrate Christmas with them? Like, am I going to do something wrong if I will do be with them? Um, so that was kind of like, okay, let me just take my time and then do it maybe after New Year. And then... Because I didn't have the understanding that I thought if I would take Shahada, that means I need to know how to pray straight away, I need to cover straight away. And I was scared of those changes because I couldn't see myself covering. And 
I was used to a certain way of dressing and then I was like, I can't wear those long dresses, hijab, like it was just something that I was like, no, I, I think I can't do it. And I think that's why I was like delaying, delaying. And then I think the family, that was the big thing. Like I was like, my parents will never understand. And they will always think that, oh, maybe she's doing this because of someone in her life. Like there are those stories that people saying, oh, because the woman met the man and then, I don't know, he told her to cover. And I, I didn't want my parents to blame anyone. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's why like, I was taking my time. So did you have a sleepless night when it came to, I'm going to wear a hijab, I'm going to do this. Did you have a difficult night that you were thinking about it, what am I going to do? You know it's true, you want to do it, but you're going to give us so much. Definitely, but what I was doing it as so well. So what did you do? What, what happened? What did you do? So if with a hijab, it took me a bit of time. I have to say, um, I mean, to cover not, but I was taking step by step, and I think that's important because for us, the rivets, that these changes, I think they should be taken step by step, and we cannot overwhelm ourselves. And I think in the beginning, that's what I did. I was like st putting too much pressure on me. I was like, I have to do this, I have to do that. And then, plus, I, I have a one friend. Um, I mean, friend, colleague from, from work. And then in the beginning, when I was doing my research, a person was telling me, oh, why you need to do this, you need to do that, you cannot do this. And I was like, hold on, like, give me a bit of space because I can't just take it everything in one go. And so then- you're saying when someone, um, so that could be a good lesson for us, that when someone thinking about doing um, step for Shahada, if you push them too much or give them too much information, it's, there was it's difficult for back. them to, it pushes them back. D definitely, because I think if, if, if you see someone who, who is like, have an interest and he wants to, like the person wants to learn about the Islam, be kind and give them bit by bit, don't, don't overwhelm them with the information. Because I remember I got the book from one of my colleagues from work and there was a, um, guidance to Islam and then um, and then my other friend saw the book and then she was like oh you can't touch this book like you can't do this and I was like what do you mean oh you need to do the wudu before touching I was like what wudu is I didn't have a knowledge and then even using a certain terms I was like so confused so um, I was like why can I, I cannot touch it and then because there is some parts in Arabic I was like okay but explain it to me but then the thing was, it wasn't actual Quran. It was just a book, so I could touch it. Obviously, like people were saying, oh, you need to respect this book because it's about the religion and this. But because it was so many things like, oh, you can't do, you can't do this. And then nobody like w was there to like, kind of explain it to me why. Then I was so confused and I was like, oh, I don't want this. Like if it's so many no's and the things I cannot mm. do it, why I should go for it? Um, but Alhamdulillah, then my other friends were really supportive and then they were like, no, you, you need to, you, you wudu is this and that, uh, you cannot touch the Quran like in the certain, on certain, uh, certain days and this, but um, there's a book where you're getting your knowledge, plus remember you are, you are just new into, and you, is, you are on your journey, so just don't take everything too much. Um, and take step by step. And then that was another thing about like taking shahada. I was like, I don't know how to pray. And then, so I was like, also, oh, if I would take shahada, that means I have to pray straight away. And my friend was like, no, we can help you. We will show you like we can. And, and I had a one really good friend who was showing me and then explaining to me. And then I got the papers where there was a step by step what to do, when to raise the hands, when to do like sujood and this. So, um, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Um, um, Can you describe this? Because uh, it's quite important to understand where you're coming from as a river sister. Like for us, is we learn pray when we're young. We see our moms pray, brothers pray, everybody prays, the community prays. It pray. comes naturally. For us, it's easy, very natural. But for you guys, you know, like, subhanAllah, when do you get up? When do you sit down? What do you read? What's next? How many rakah? 
did I miss anything? You know, it's like you're sweating. I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, definitely. How, how can you describe that? That would be very interesting. So, um, and how long does it take to make it perfect? Like, minimum. No, it can't be perfect, but I'm saying, to, uh, how difficult is it? So, it, to memorize the prayer, it yes. took me... Say your confidence, I, I, I can pray. It took me whole Ramadan last year so to learn. Yeah, and then, but, but the thing was, so I started with the paper, like a prince, and then every single prayer was on the paper, how many rakah, because I was getting uh, confused about it. Because I was like, okay, one rakah, like two rakah in the four here, and then I was like, no, I need to have step by step. So um, I think the first prayer, I think I recorded, it took me like 18 minutes to actually pray, so yeah, four rakah, I think 18 minutes, and then, and I was like reading, scoping the papers, um, and then um, I went to the mosque, East but London. How do you feel? What's your, in, in that 18 minutes journey you've done, it's like you It was to, hard. It's I like was, you're going to Brighton, yeah, it <laughs> isn't was, it? Yeah, yeah, it was so hard. So, what was going through your mind then? You're not Muslim yet, are you? That time? No, I, I was Muslim that time okay. already. Uh, sorry, so no. So the first time when I actually pray, I wasn't Muslim, and that was the Tahajjud. Wow. Yeah, that was Tahajjud. Lovely. Um, so um, I was going through some, some hard time in my life, and um, that was like, and just before taking Shahada, and one of my friends told me, you know, there is that night prayer that we, we pray. It's called Tahajjud, and, and um, like we ask in Allah like if we want something to give it to us, and if it's bad to take it away. And there were so many things going on, and I was like, let me try it, why not? Like, I'm not Muslim, I didn't even know that we, which direction, that there's a special direction to pray, and like, I didn't know that, I just knew that I have to put something on the floor and, and, and pray, so I found it on, the, on YouTube, how to pray Tahajjud. Um, I didn't understand anything, but I just knew that. There was a description, like, in English, um, and I found the a video on YouTube how to do the wudu. So it was like a, for the kids. So I went to the bathroom and did the, the wudu uh, with that video. And then I prayed the Hajj the first time. I was like watching the YouTube, like skipping a bit, posing in this. And then I remember after that, I prayed twice. Um, obviously it wasn't perfect, but the things started changing in my life. And I was like, wow, I just pray two times. Like, and I'm, I'm not even probably doing that properly, but I was like, something is going on. So far, and that amazing. was a, one of the like, signs as well for me. I was like, wow, I'm getting a science that, that's true. And then and the, and the, wow. the, the, the belief <clears throat> is, is... You know, you know that's, that's another thing I, I'd love to know from you, because, you know, as a born Muslims, we don't, we don't put our attention f for the signs. You know, you yeah. see what I mean? So like, I'm confident that I'm all right. You see what I mean? Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. It's a very arrogant way of yeah. seeing things. But for you, you see the signs. You see the differences. Because you're very innocent. You're looking for Allah. You know, like you're looking for yeah. the Creator. And He will give you signs. Yeah, he I will think give you signs that based on what you're looking we, for. Yeah. So what are those signs? So, so when if I you want to share, you can share. So no, so when I, when I pray for the certain things, that uh, there was something that I really, really like wanted to in my life, and okay. then, uh, and then I was like, just make it easy for me, like just please, like I I really want that thing to happen, and I think it's good for me, and um, and after like not not long time, it happened, and I was like, um. wow, like it was so hard. But then when I prayed, it actually happened. And then the things in my life started like getting better. The things that I was going through, like it was easier for me. And then I was like, wow, it's, it's actually working. Mm -hmm. So that was the one of the things. And actually there was a one more thing. Um, and I did, that was the beginning, beginning of my research. And I think that was February 21. And I took Shahada in October 21. So. I, I was really ill, and that was after the COVID, and I was really ill, and I just went back to work, and I came home, and actually I had the feeling like something cut my legs, I couldn't move, and I and I went to sleep, and I was really struggling. I woke up in the middle of the night and crying, and I, I thought I'm gonna call ambulance. It was so bad, and then I remember like praying in my head, and I was like, 
like a life you are there like i don't know if i believe in you now or no but i, I know there is a god there like please if if you are there just take that pain away from me like i, I will i promise i will do my search and then i will try to find that that's true but just take this pain away and then i woke up in the morning there was no pain and then so i think that's the one of the, the first first things then there was a tahajud and and yeah that's Okay, um, see, see, that's amazing. <laughs> you see, it's a really good way to, uh, I mean, uh, going for Shahada, isn't it? You're getting ready for it. Yeah, I think... So, Shahada. So then after that, you decided you want to do Shahada, yeah? So, I, I wasn't sure. So what happened, um, I was following the, the brothers that I had given a dawah. And um, I went to, to, to see them. They are on Shepherd's Bush and uh, Station. And then I went to see them and then I wasn't sure. I didn't plan to take my shahada, but I just wanted to ask them questions because that was before I was going to Poland before Christmas. And I remember on that day I was crying, I was so emotional, I didn't know what was going on. And then, and then I, I, I was already there and then I was like, no, I'm not going to talk to them. Like I was like going and going back and then, and then one of the brothers was passing by and I stopped him. I said like, oh hi, I want to ask the question because I'm looking into Islam, but there are certain things that I'm not sure about it. And then we had like maybe 15 minutes conversation and they said to me, do you want to take your Shahada? Are you ready? And I started crying like a child. Super. And um, it was a really emotional. And I said, yeah, like there is nothing else like that, that I need to know, like I'm ready. That's what I believe in. And I took my Shahada with them um, and that was end of October 2021. Um, SubhanAllah, lucky man, whoever done the Shahada on you. Um, why did you cry? Is there something emotional happened to you within because yourself? Because I think somehow inside me I knew my life will change now and and it was a uh, maybe because I was scared as well because I, I knew I was ready, I knew what I believe in but I was scared what's gonna happen, and then I knew it's gonna, my life will be better. But in the same time, I I know I will go through hard time so as hard. well. Because I was, I think, scared of my family. That was the most uh, scary part of it. Okay, so you know, after your shahada, mashallah, you done the shahada. That's brilliant. Um, what was the feeling then, after that moment? So you're probably coming home now. Is it? You done your shahada? Yes. You coming home? What was going through your mind? So, the the first thing I was like, okay, what am I gonna do now? Like, I I did the big step. I'm Muslim now, and then what's gonna be next? Like, uh, that I knew I, I will I will have to like le learn how to pray and I change my lifestyle. Okay. And then, so I think it'll be good to, good to hear from you. Uh, what does shahada means? I mean, what do you do in shahada? What do you what did you do? Inshallah. So I said that well, I believe in God and then, oh, you mean that? Yeah, so the sentence, can you explain yeah. the sentence? Because if, if, if any of our uh, non-Muslim friends are watching, they would love to know that sentence that you say. Ashadu wa yeah. ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad and abduhu wa rasuluh. There's none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger and servant of Allah. That's it, this is the only line yeah. you say and we become Muslim. Yeah. So you accept them. So that's the, uh, uh, um, the magic line, subhanAllah. Um, can I, so after your shahada, I oh know, sorry, I stopped you. So no, what happened? Right. You go. What was it? So um, because I, did, I, I had the Muslim friends, but I was thinking if there are other rivets as well, because obviously I'm not the only one. In <laughs> and I remember um, when I spoke with these brothers, I said, oh, do you know any, because I knew a lot of people taking shahada with them. So it's like, oh, it would be good to know any sister as well, who, who is in that same journey as me. And I remember the, somebody on the same day contacted me and, and we had the conversation and then we said, okay, we're going to meet. Um, but the, the other thoughts were like, I mean, I think I felt so much peace in, like I was so I'm like, sure. I was still emotional. I was like, wow, like I feel so light. Like, May Allah bless yeah. you. So we stop you here. We're going to go for a small break. Well, Dear brothers and sisters, um, you just heard what the sisters is talking about, her journey to Islam. I mean, it's amazing feelings. And 
some of us born Muslim, we don't get that feeling because we're not struggling for it. So we can see how she was making the journey to Islam and how she was getting the signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah accept her and accept all of us, inshallah. I'll see you after the break to stay with us, please, and then hear the rest of the story, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome again. Um, without any delay, again, we go to the journey again, a journey to Islam. We had a lot of amazing stuff from Sister um, Koshia. And especially, I loved it when she said before the Shahada, she done Tajud. And that changed her life, the way she thinks. And after that, she almost like. She, ready to take shahada mashallah and she took the shahada and she was very emotional and she said that she, she found the peace she found um, relief or lighten the burdens that's amazing to know and um, we'll go back to her inshallah see how people reacted around her and um, that would be very another interesting journey again so the second part dear sister thank you for coming and um, Second part, almost, after the break. Um, now you became Muslim, mashallah, welcome. And you were looking for some, someone like you, Rivet, probably. And, and you said you found peace and relief. So the steps are coming very harsh now on you. That How did you decide to wear a hijab? and how did people react and your family so we'll start with your um, family when you told them that you're muslim how was what was the reaction so um after taking shahada i went to poland it was a christmas time and then i didn't put hijab straight away but um i started like covering wearing uh, longer dresses and and that was like a kind of sign for them um i didn't really say, say straight away that oh, I'm Muslim, but I didn't eat certain things. I didn't eat pork or didn't even eat chicken because it wasn't halal. And um, they were like, oh, what's going on? What's happening? So in the beginning, I was like, oh, try to say, oh, I'm vegetarian, but that didn't work. Um, yeah, and but they had, I think. Why didn't it work? How did it Because they, they knew, like, it's not about that, because plus they knew I'm, I'm around Muslim people as well. Okay. So I think my mom was feeling somehow something changed. So the first person that I told I'm Muslim, it was my grandma. And I don't, I, it's hard for me to describe her reaction. She was like, okay, like, so it's fine. And I was like, what do you think how mom will react? And she's like, I don't know, because my family is not really religious. I won't say they are religious, but they, they follow like, okay, they celebrate Christmas, they celebrate Easter. If there are any like a church celebration, they do, but they are not going to church. They don't pray and stuff. Um, but I think because the Islam was something new, and they because they didn't know what's going on and they don't know the religion, um, they got kind of scared. Um, so I was giving my mom signs, and I was advised as well, if I'm not feeling comfortable or if I'm scared that something can happen. It's better not to, to tell my family, but show them with my action, like that I change, I'm maybe like better daughter now, like I, I don't argue and stuff. So show them with the actions, like, okay, she's becoming a better person. Um, so that's what I was trying in the beginning. Um, Did it work? I think maybe a bit, because now over time and after nearly two years after taking Shahada, I think they slowly, slowly accepting. Uh, but in the beginning was hard, and then I remember my parents taking me for like we went for like a family trip, a one day family trip, and they started like questioning. And then because I was really really new, I didn't have all of the answers, and we had a massive argument. They said no, something is going on, like some fa someone is forcing you, like why you are so crazy like do you want to do you, are you following something because you want to have a friend and stuff i said no it's not about that and the funny enough because my mom she knew my best friend who kind of helped me and she didn't have any problem with her being muslim and her being in my life and she knew we're going outside 
and this but maybe because um i don't know because it wasn't me that's why they accepted and when when when, when it comes to myself it was just um crazy and then my mom's like no you're not gonna do that like we're gonna stop you from it like if there will be um the way like we're gonna bring you here and you're not going back to to london and this i was like you can't stop me like i'm adult like i'm, I'm that time i was 25 so you can't close me in the house like what you gonna do and so they didn't take it right um but i think again it was because they were scared and i think for the parents i think somehow i think they think like they fail as a parents that w because they were teaching us whole life certain mm -hmm. way of living and things and then and i was talking to my other friends and i think for them especially for the mom if she has no knowledge and she's like what what did i done wrong that my daughter or my son is like going this way that i i, I don't know and and i think that was the the, the the biggest problem but now alhamdulillah like my mom is getting slowly used to and now she's starting asking the questions like it's still I'm, I'm not wearing hijab in front of my family um if i go poland i will cover like i will wear like hoodie and stuff or hat or something so i'm finding the way um i will wear like longer clothes like dresses and stuff um but i will not have actual hijab on um and i remember my mom's reaction on hijab at first that was before taking shahada because i was trying to find how she's going to react. And I bought my first hijab and I sent her the picture. And, and she was like, just take this off. Like, what are you doing? Are you crazy? And I was like, just, it's fine. Like, I'm just trying on. I'm just like, want to see how it looks like. Um, so the reaction was really bad. So I was like, I don't know if she's going to accept it. And then last year, I was going um, with my, I mean, with a friend. So we went uh, for a hike. And I was telling my mom, oh, like, um, I need to cover my, my head because it's going to be, like, hot and this and that, so this, to cover my, myself from the sun. So she was like, oh, I'm sure you have a lot of scarves at home. You can cover yourself. Like, you can just put something, like, do the turban or something. And I was like, so you know I do have and I do cover. Um, and now when I was in Poland, um, like, she, w she I think she just knows, but she just don't want to talk about it but she's like yeah i know you're covering there like um and i think she sees that i'm not really have any pictures not uncovered or something like i'm not really showing myself as well um so i think she she now she's slowly getting used to people around her you know like her friends or your relatives and stuff how do they react is, so, she, getting, is she getting pressure from them that your daughter is doing this this is what are you Actually, uh, yeah, I mean, so my family, so my cousins, they are around my age, like I'm the second one from all of my cousins. So I don't have a siblings. And I think that's another thing that's why it's so, so hard for my mom because I'm the only child. Um, but I, I have a cousins and we are all like similar age. So my cousins are fine. Um, even if we go somewhere, they're all, oh, oh, I think you cannot eat this or that. So they are really Mashallah. supportive, yeah. Um, my grandma will cook for me. Like I, I found a halal meat in Poland, so so she will cook for me and stuff, and she will like make sure the mom will not give me something that I cannot eat. Um, but there was a one kind of bad reaction. So I remember when I went for the hike and I I, I cover myself. It wasn't like full hijab. It was like more like turban thing. And I posed the picture with my friends from the hike, and then after that my grandma called me and she's like what are you posting online? I said, what did I post? And then she's like, oh, your auntie called me. Like, what you doing? Like, why are you covering? Like, what's going on with you? And I was like, I just cover. Like, there's nothing wrong. I cover my hair and, and that's it. Like, I wear longer clothes, but there's nothing wrong about it. She's like, yeah, but they're telling us, like, what's going on with you and stuff. So, but I think it's because maybe it's the older generation and like they are over like 60 years old my the, the auntie and then that's why maybe because again there's a lack of knowledge but my cousins and the friends in poland are actually really supportive and, yeah um 
But, but wearing a, a hoodie, it's like a hijab, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it doesn't have to be... There are certain things sisters, I see their sisters are wearing. They're just wearing because everybody's doing it, to be honest yeah. with you. Yes, of course, it's, it's not described in Islam that you have to wear a style like this. They want to lose clothes and cover yourself as much as you can, especially hair and all that. So it's fine. Yeah. So you could have a... a um, Different style. Yeah, European style, but covered. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Indian or Arab style all the time. It shouldn't mm. be. Because Islam is a universal thing. Yeah. You know, otherwise it's difficult to engage with people. And it's like you use your hikmah, the yeah, wiseness that I'm going to wear a, a, um, cover my hair with a hoodie. Yeah. That's it. It's not a problem. Um, how about your friend? Did you lose any friends that thought you were away? Because your lifestyle has changed. Did you, were you drinking before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and then I, I was... Smoking before? No. I, I, I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did, yeah. Um, I've, I, no, I, I don't think if I lost any friend, I may, maybe one, but I, that was kind of my choice. Um, I just knew that friend is not good for, like, for me. Like, I don't want to hang around with that friend, but that's a friend from Poland. So I kind of cut it off and um, that, that's it really. But I think my, my closest friend and the people that I was around, um, no, they are still in my life. Um, and in here, I think, no, I think still, I still have the same friends. And so, you know, uh, um, like you said, it's a family thing, the reaction and this and that and that. So you are praying that time. Were you praying for them? Did you for pray? For my family? Yeah. Definitely because... So how do you do that? I mean, what, what, how was it? It's, it's, I'd love to know how you... So imagine you come downstairs, you know, eating the stuff they're eating and then they're moody and you go upstairs and you're praying. How do you... Because you love your parents. Yeah. Right? You love your grandma. I mean, it's something that it's, it's, it's part of our inner journey, you know. So how do you... What do you say to God about them? I always ask God to make it easier and for me as a, that to my, my family, to my mom to accept it and that to open her heart on Islam because I wish that she, one day she will accept Islam as well and she will Inshallah. find Inshallah. Yeah, but I, I always ask for the help for my family and basic things like, but I always say that please like just make it easy for my mom to accept who I am now and then how my life is and for her to to maybe like open her heart on Islam that she will want to to look for it as I did because I think I think there is a chance that my mom might I mean I hope I pray for it that she might accept Islam one day um, but yeah I think for my mom why it was scary as well because she said to me in the beginning, oh, so if we will both die, we won't go to the same heaven or something. And I think that's... Very emotional. Isn't yeah, it, very it is. It is. And then, and she was crying as well. Like, she's like, oh, so if we're not going to meet in, in there, or like, because we believe in something different and different God. And I was like, in the end of the day, we believe in, in, in God. And then we, we never know. He's does, does she think that you hate Jesus now? Mm, I don't think so. I, I don't hate Jesus. Of I believe. Of course, you can't. Yeah, I, I love Jesus. I think even probably more because I I know who he is and that he's a prophet. So it's not that I for, I forgot about him and I stopped believing him. It's just I don't believe in him as a god. He is a prophet and he was the message as well. But um, no, I don't. I think, think this so. message has not been clear to especially. Um, people from different faiths, especially Christianity, that we love Jesus. Yeah. You know, we, we follow his teachings. You know, we want to, we're waiting for him to come back and help mm. us. You know, we, he's, a, he's one, of, one of the biggest prophets in Islam. Islam, when we say Islam, means that um, follower of all those prophetic chain. Mm. And he's one of the unbroken chain. Yes. So we believe that... Prophet Muhammad is the last of the Prophet, peace be upon him, all of them, that he's not doing anything new. There's no new information about yeah. belief. 
is the continuous belief from the Adam alayhi salam up to the Prophet Muhammad is the same chain, unbroken chain of belief. So this is more complete message, to be honest with you. Yeah. One thing I want to ask you, um, uh, when you see that, when you see, say you're changed, so you're giving up drinking, smoking, nightclubs, um, going out whenever you want, arguments. So actually, you, you're giving up all those the things that things. we almost well, these are bad things. Why would someone be upset or scared of these things? It doesn't work. I, I can't. I, 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 don't, I don't know how it works. Um, I'm assuming they probably think, okay, they're giving up this, but they might do something bad. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like extreme something. And what they see in the media and stuff like that, they're probably scared of that. That they can, that person can turn into blind faith. Yeah. And move in that line and do something bad. Is that what it is? I the parents so. love us. Any parents love their children. You know, your mum yeah. loves you. That's why she cried. And we're not going to be in the same, same place. You know, it's, it's heartbreaking, to be honest. It is. And then I think that's why it's sometimes so hard um, for me to talk to her about the Islam because, because she's getting really emotional and I can't really handle when she's crying. And... For me, it's like I just don't want her to be scared. And I think slowly, slowly, if I will start talking to her and explain to her mom, like, no, I'm not, there's nothing wrong going on in my life. Like, I, I have a really good life. Like, I'm happy and then, and everything is fine. But because for her, she's like, again, scared. And as you said, parents love us no matter what. Um, it's just sometimes hard for them to accept things. Um, yeah, but I was thinking as well, I said once to my mom, I said, what's the problem? Like, because I cover, so I'm not exposing myself, like I'm not exposing my body to anyone. Like, there is uh, things that I'm not doing, like, well, would you like me to, I don't know, drink and smoke and go in nightclubs or, or whatever? And she, she couldn't really say why that's, that is a problem that I'm not doing the things. And sometimes still if I would say, oh, I'm going out to have food with my friends or something. Or you go in a club. I said, no, mom, I don't do that anymore. Um, but I think it's again because it's something that she was used to me doing. And now because I changed it, it's just like, why? Like there's something behind, something bad behind that. Mm. So, yeah. Um. We don't have much more time. I think time is running out for again. Um, have you studied uh, the life of the Prophet? Have you studied or... Have a you, little bit, a yeah. Little bit? What impressed you the most about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, about his life? What impressed you the most? I think that he wasn't like, scared and then even that the people were bad luck like, because when he was like, giving the message to people about about the Islam that they, they, they were like, no, it's this crazy like but because he really believed and he had that okay no matter what and plus he was really caring like he cared about the people um yeah i think that's the way how he lived as well so and i know if we will follow it like that's that's how it should be yeah because when we study his life you will find he's the best of fathers he's yeah. an amazing father who he loved his children he played with them as a grandfather, he was one of the best of mm. grandfather. When he was praying, his his grandchildren used to jump in his hair, in his shoulder, and he wouldn't. He's praying, but he wouldn't yeah. tell them to tell them yeah. off. You know, he would go along with it. When it comes to leadership, he was the man that would, you know, with the wiseness, and he would always think good about people. Yeah. You know, when he came to, um, when they won the battle. I mean, when he came to uh, Mecca, winning the thingy, victory, and he found a woman going out screaming, mm. oh, he came in here, he's going to take over everything. And he saw this woman can't take the bag with him. And she said, can I help you, old ma'am? Said, she said, yeah, 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 please help me with the, my bags. And he actually took the bag on his shoulder and taking her. And she said, where are you going? I'm going to that mountain because I'm running away from this man came from Medina, taking over mm -hmm. our cities and changing our religion, all that stuff. And she's complaining and he's not saying anything, anything. at all and just yeah. going along with it. And when he went there and then somebody knew him, he said, oh, you're with Muhammad. 
And he said, is he Muhammad? Peace be upon him. He said, yes. Yeah. Wow, if this is you, yeah. and if this is your religion, I will become Muslim. And he became Muslim in that spot. That's how, he's, that's how he was. I think it's, that's, that's why I say it says, show with your actions. Because, and, that's, and that's what he did. Like, he was a good for people, no matter that they believe or not. So, yeah. I mean, if that was, what people are doing is, they're taking his life as they wish. Okay, so mm. they're talking, taking his life in the battlefield and talking about it, the jihadis. Mm. But remember, he's got a full life. Yeah, he is, not just he the... is the human teacher teaching us how to gain uh, um, the best out of this life so you enjoy the ne life next yeah. life. And he even says, so look how humble he is. He even said, I will not go to paradise without mercy of God. Mm. He's a prophet. Yeah. And he's, everything was forgiven, but he still said, without mercy of God, I oh, can't go yeah. to heaven. And that's true. Without mercy of Allah, you can't go to heaven. Our work helps to get mercy. Yes. But it's not guaranteed that our work will take us to the paradise. We need to try our best. You know, we do our best, and God will show his mercy. Um, that's amazing, actually. Um, if I say to you um, to say something to non-Muslim audience are watching us. But to non-Muslim Muslim, non -Muslim. Non -Muslim. or people of the world, to be honest with you, they are not Muslims. What would you say to them to, uh, about Islam? What do you do? Because you are a practical person, you became Muslim, you've seen it, you've read it, uh, without any push or anything, you voluntarily chose to become Muslim, you think it's the true, uh, only true, to be honest. Um, what would you say to them? I think before judging us, get the knowledge, like do your research a bit, because people are sometimes will say things bad about Muslims, but they, but they, they don't really search for it, don't believe in everything what is outside on social media, because not everything is true in there. And yeah, before maybe judging us, just look for the, the from different sources for the information. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And for someone who is non-Muslim but is looking into it, just don't be scared because if you will take a step forward, like you will see that the difference and then the life will change. After you became Muslim, you came to um, a, um, um, like a Muslim community, the Ummah. What was your expectation? Um, and do you think you've what was your expectation first? Let me see. I think I was a bit scared. I didn't know what to expect, if people will accept me or not. Especially, like, okay, I'm not born Muslim, so I'm a bit different. Like, I don't know. I, if I, It was a bit scary. Um, and I, I wasn't sure if, if I would be accepted as a like, Muslim now. I mean, because I had a Muslim friends, they were fine. But I think, like... They're always happy for us, but they are not sure as well because it's like, okay, but why? Or people are like, oh, why did she accept our religion or something? They are happy, but maybe because, again, they see us a bit different. But um, Do you think they're suspicious? Maybe. They would okay. just like, oh, what's behind that? Like, why? Um, yeah, and I think a lot of... <laughs> we got enough problem. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I think... Um, and I think a lot of people think like, oh, maybe we did because of someone. And I, like, I got questions so many times, oh, who are you married to? Like, oh, where is your husband mm -hmm. from? I was like, no, I'm not married. <laughs> like, it's, it's not about husband and stuff. But, um, yeah, I think I didn't really have expectation. But, yeah, I, d I didn't really know what to expect. But I was a bit nervous, definitely. So when you, when you look at Muslims, sometimes you might get an uh, impression that Muslims are perfect Islamic. Islam mm. and Muslim are different. People who practice Islam, the Muslims. Yeah. They, we're all learning. We're all trying to be better, to be honest with you. But as, this is not Islam. Islam is totally different than yeah. the, uh, what we see what Muslim uh, people are doing. They're trying. We're trying our best to become one. So if, if someone sees us and thinks this is Islam, I think that would be a very wrong uh, judgment, isn't it? A little bit, sometimes, yeah. yeah because... Um, I feel like the, the, we are not perfect and we all make mistakes. So like sometimes we might get the, maybe not misunderstanding, but the wrong picture of, the, of, of it. 
um, but I don't know. I, f I feel like I have a quite a good experience. Sure. Over, yeah. Your last word to our viewers. What would you like to say? For our viewers, that um, I don't know. I think if it, if they are Muslims, they are the Muslim viewers, born Muslims. I said, just please be kind and for us and especially rivers and someone who's looking into Islam. Mm. I want to thank you first and thank everyone for watching, dear mm -hmm. viewers. Um, our time is finished. I hope we could have continued, inshallah. We will be continuing another few more uh, episodes, inshallah. Jazakumallah khairan for staying with us. If you made any mistake, please do forgive us and hope to see you again. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.